Hi, this is Bobby <coughs> at Compound TV Repair, and this video is about a common problem that we are encountering after repairing and returning uh, certain Visio boards to customers. <coughs> it relates to all boards that are based on this PCB 0171. 2272, 3237, I believe there is a version with 35 as well, or 32, like this one, even though I haven't seen another one like this particular one that has just one connector here for both, <coughs> I'm sorry, the infrared sensor and uh, the wheel button. These are XVT323SV, XVT373SV, XVT42, SV, XVT423, SV, XVT472, SV, XVT553, SV. Now, it also apply, applies to the XVT3D, 474, SV, XVT3D, uh, 554, SV, that are, have very similar boards to this one. Make sure this sits like this, I'm sorry. And uh, the problem is that after we repair and return the board's functional, customers come back and say uh, the board comes up, but uh, there's nothing on the screen. The backlights do come up, but the screen is dark, your sign is a defective board. Nine out of ten times, the reason for that problem, and it, I know we have other videos that document this, but I will title this one specifically so I can point people to it. Uh, the reason for that is usually that fuse here carrying the 12 volts from the power to the TCOM through the LVDS cable is blown. And the easiest thing to do is uh, to just replace that fuse. Now, the, the reason the fuse burns, it, it doesn't burn here. The reason the fuse burns is uh, usually that the LVDS cable gets inserted improperly sideways, not all the way up, or that there are twisted and turned pins on the back. This one does not have twisted pins. It only has pins that have been broken. And well, it does have one that is twisted, as you can see here. And uh, it takes one or two inserts sometimes from the first one, if you're careful more. Here it is twisted again on the other side. Uh, it takes one or two installs, slugs by original design those cables are designed to sustain no more than say 10 or 5 it's really low number insertions before those individual wires peel off and start going backwards sideways and whatnot so one of the most common reasons why this fuse would blow is these pins there being twisted another one is it being inserted sideways and not evenly and yet another one is the cable being either plugged in or pulled out when there is 12 volts going already out to the TCOM and it just being shaken and giving poor contact shorted literally while on the way in and the way out. Uh, because of that, whenever we disassemble boards, we always pull power uh, first and only then disconnect that. We just learned over the course of years and hundreds of boards repair that this is the right way to do it, but customers don't necessarily know that. They do whatever they do and then they blame us. So in this case, we had a board that was returned to here. I'm just going to cover another problem that goes along with that. So Felix Ramos sent us a board uh, saying that it blew HDMI my fuse approximately five minutes after installing it. My board, blah, 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 talking to us and what, what, what now. Um, what the customer doesn't say is that the board blew a fuse that they replaced. We've been in talk with them and we, you know, narrowed it down. The fuse was open. We offered to send them a replacement fuse uh, or told them where to buy it. And um, they said that they already ordered fuses and they have it and then they installed it and then it kept on blowing fuses. We ultimately told them that probably it's the T-cone that's overloading the fuse. Uh, and they got a new T-cone and it kept on happening. And we told them, okay, you know, give up on the whole thing or send it back again. And they decided to send it back again. And here's what we find that honestly, I did not think, but it only proves that, you know, humans are, no offense, man, very creative when creating mess. This fuse is 500 milliamps, that's 0.1 amps. The proper fuse that has to go here is 3 amps. Uh, just a different board with the original fuse on it. 
So of course if you replace the fuse that is 3 amps with one that is half an amp, that is what, 6 times less? Uh, it's a wonder it didn't blow up right away. So that is the problem in this case. And it just did not occur to us that somebody that we offered to send him a replacement fuse and they said, again, no offense to Felix, it's a, probably an honest mistake, they don't have to be electronics engineers, but we have to deal with all that on a, you know, literally daily basis, people uh, fixing their boards, disconnecting them, not handling them properly. And we cannot educate because people don't follow directions. They don't, we have very, very well done and descriptive offerings about what we offer. And we still have people every day, literally, buying repairs that they, they don't know that they're buying repairs. Yesterday I made a video about a TV repair service center that sent back a fully functional EEPROM claiming that it wasn't functioning. Uh, and honestly, I don't think they wanted to scam us. I just think that they're incompetent and they didn't want to listen to us. They don't respond to our emails uh, on eBay. We just have to deal with all that incompetency and it's, and it's you know, not everybody has to be an expert in, in all that. And, and I do understand that and I don't expect it, but uh, hopefully people who get to this video can get some lessons about how to handle the situation fastly and efficiently. So if your, if your board that was here and we tell you that it works fine, comes up and there is nothing on the screen but the light, but the back lights come up, the very first thing that you need to check is that cable and whether it is uh, defective on the back or not. We change cables here every maybe three weeks. We have them on a special thing. We just replace that cable because it's easier and we have a bulk of them and um, just because they wear out so you have to check the fuse and see whether it's open or not if it is open then you have to replace it we do have a listing at our website for a bunch of four fuse if the fuse is blown it is very easy to put a fuse on top of that one you don't have to desolder it the best way to desolder that fuse is with hot air uh, but not a blow dryer because it will start melting the connector. If you are desoldering with a solder gun, the best thing to do is to add a lot of solder and it's better be um, PB uh, solder and not PB free because the PB, I'm sorry, the, the word went out of my head. Uh, solder has a lower melting temperature. Lead is the word that I was looking for. The, the lead at solder has a lower melting temperature. So if you are add a lot of it, and you should be able to desolder both ends of the shoes at the same time. Uh, that said, uh, I can talk a whole lot more about troubleshooting those boards, but this is just something that is often happen of happening commonly and hopefully it will help. Uh, I'm going to replace the fuse on that board and test it and I'm pretty sure it's going to be working fine afterwards uh, but I will follow up if it is now. Thank you.